All right, guys, so in this video, we're talking about the Beta FPV Light Radio 2 SE Express LRS Edition. That's a big mouthful. So, um, yeah, I did a video on the Light Radio 2 SE, uh, I think about nine or ten months ago. Um, and largely, the way the radio works isn't all that different. Uh, of course, they have main, replaced the main board that's inside here. So, uh, if you will go, <laughs> if you open it up and if you look inside, of course, you got the gimbals, and then there's a main board in here, and they have replaced that board, which was previously Free Sky, I think D8, D16, and this one is now exclusively only Express LRS. But uh, the way it functions um, is pretty close to the way it was before, except of course you can't switch modes and stuff like that with uh, Free Sky, and um, you do have to uh, you have to use a it's called a Beta FPV configurator. So a little program you can download, I'll link that in the description, to configure the Express LRS modes on here. So you can adjust the uh, power level, I think it's 25 milliwatts, 50 milliwatts, and 100 milliwatts are the three different power levels available to you. And uh, the packet rate, or the refresh rate of the signal, I think as low as 25 hertz and up to 500 hertz, which is the max rate for 2.4 gigahertz Express LRS. Basically the power setup is the same as a 1S uh, 1000 milliamp hour battery in here. It charges via the USB-C port. The USB-C port can be used for charging and also for the simulator function or the joystick function, which will work when the radio is turned on. If the radio is turned off and you plug it into your computer, then you can connect it up to the Beta FPV configurator to make those settings changes uh, for the Express LRS settings, but the radio has to be off if you do that. There is an audio jack down here, which um, I'm pretty sure is a trainer port. It, on the diagrams, it lists, it lists this as a S port port, so I'm not sure if uh, you could connect this up to an external multi-protocol module or not, though some people suggest it could, it could be happening, or, that, or you could possibly do that, but I don't know how you would be able to control that without a screen. And this, doesn't even, this does not even run OpenTX. This is running the proprietary um, software that was on the original Light Radio 2 SC because they switched away from OpenTX going from Light Radio 2 to the Light Radio 2 SE. So this is basically the third generation. And uh, in regarding the gimbals, I know you're going to get a lot of people complaining that the gimbals are bad. Um, I know that on the very first generation, uh, basically the ones that have the uh, micro USB port that are running OpenTX. There was issues with calibration with OpenTX and calibrating it and the, the funky way of using OpenTX without a screen and also some gimbals having some quality control issues from the factory. I haven't heard as many problems with the second generation that does not have OpenTX with the USB-C port. So I think, you know, if you have heard some problems Maybe you should find out if they have the first gen with the OpenTX version or the second gen. Um, I do know that some of the first gen ones did have some gimbals that wore out prematurely. I actually have ha I've had about uh, 10 of these. I've got four, I've been through four of the first gen ones. One has gone bad on the throttle side. The other three are okay. And then uh, uh, the other four second gen ones that I have are all still okay. Now, granted, I don't use them frequently or on a daily basis, just, you know, for testing and stuff. So uh, in terms of like jitter and um, the, uh, the, I guess the limits of the, uh, in terms of the signal being sent or through beta flight. So far, out of the 10 I have, about one, you know, only one's had a failed gimbal, and that's the from the first gen with the USB-C, I'm sorry, the USB, the micro USB port and OpenTX. I haven't had any of the other ones fail. Uh, they all seem to be still working. Now, the I do notice that the jitter on the gimbals over the ones that are like a lot older, the ones like I think the first gen ones that I have that are still working, there's a little bit jitter in the center, um, basically the center stick. Uh, which you can correct with a little bit of dead, basically some dead band um, in the, um, I guess it's the receiver tab. You can add that to beta flight, it seems to correct it. But all the other ones that I've used, they, they center fine, and they don't have any, like this one doesn't have any jitter. Any, none of the ones that have the USB-C port have any kind of jitter at all. Uh, I think those, the only, the only ones that had any sort of jitter were the ones from OpenTX. So that's it, I'm just like, telling you what my experience has been. I know that there's tons of people out there that had uh, their own experiences and I'm 
fairly certain and you know if you are ones that had the failures on the second gen with the USB-C port let me know but most of the people that I have spoken to said that the ones that had the bad gimbals were the very first gen uh, light radios with OpenTX and the micro USB port so and they that might have been like a bad batch like I think it might have been the second or third batch those came it was very early on when this radio was out I was probably about a year or so ago maybe a year and three or four months and then since then i think that because of all the complaints from the first gen i don't think a lot of the the second generator is sold very much and i know that people don't don't want it because it doesn't have open tx all that um you know and they want the screen so i mean you have to keep a keep in mind that this is a budget radio 40 45 dollars uh, of course, you know, if you want something with better gimbals, like uh, an OpenTX and a screen, you what you really want is like the Jumper T-Lite, which is going to cost you um, almost double. I think they're running about 80 bucks right now, um, possibly more if you get the ones with the uh, multi-protocol, mo the full multi-protocol module. I think those are about 100 or may possibly more depending on where you buy that. So for those of you guys that say, well, they should put a screen in here, haul, haul sensor your gimbals and still sell for $40. I don't think that's a realistic expectation because the cost just goes up. You have to pay more, and if you want that, you should just get the the more expensive radio. I mean, that's just that's the only thing I can say. You know, you shouldn't be considering this one if you don't want to spend more money. This is really for people that are just starting out. They don't really know if they want to stick with the hobby for more than a few months. You know, maybe you know, forty dollars is worth it for them, and if they can get a year's year's worth of use out of it and then upgrade later that could be a good route for them or you know if they want to spend more money up front and get something better it's going to last them longer then yeah i would recommend getting something like the jumper t-light instead that's going to give them a little bit more flexibility on the road so yeah you know obviously this isn't the greatest radio this is the cheapest you know budget radio out there that you can get and for actually for this is the first one that has express LRS out the box and i just don't see that they can add all those additional features for this amount of money uh, without, you know, cutting, I mean, I don't know where else you can cut corners. So you can put in some better gimbals, maybe. Um, it'll cost you maybe 10, $15 more, $20 more. If you want a screen, it's gonna throw another 20 bucks in there, et cetera. You, know, it's just, you, you, get, you get what you pay for, basically. Anyway, so a couple of things here on the binding. Uh, you mean basically turn it on, and to put it into binding mode, you press the bind button. Now this, yeah, obviously you can update the firmware on this later with the beta FPV configurator. I haven't got any information about whether you can you can put your a binding passphrase in there like you can with some of the other uh, OpenTX modules. I'm hoping that they'll add that in the future. Right now the configurator is like an RC2 version at the time of this recording this video, so it's um, you know it's still in development. They may uh, have that ability to add that feature to your firmware update later but for now you have to do the basically the um, standard binding procedure however if you're like uh, for example I, I was testing this receiver here this is the hx115lr that has the built-in uh, express lrs receiver into the flight controller board which is not an spi receiver so i flashed it with express lrs configurator with my binding phrase and if you have any receiver that has that binding phrase in there you can't bind it with this radio currently because the, unless you can flash the firmware on here with the, your binding phrase, which right, that's a, right now we, um, there's no way to do that, as far as I know. Uh, of course, that could change in the future. So you have to revert your firmware on the receiver with uh, basically when you, you basically reflash it and then disable the binding phrase uh, option, turn that off, and then you go through the uh, standard binding procedure where you power on and off the flight controller, or the, in this case the receiver, three times, and then you get the double blinking. Um, light on the receiver which means it's in binding mode then you put the transmitter into binding mode basically long press the bind button the light will turn red and it indicates it's in binding mode and then once it once it's finished binding it will turn blue and then you'll have a solid connection okay so in terms of like the range and everything like that this is you know um, got like a patch antenna here so it's basically very directional so if you're pointing at your quad uh, you're gonna get the best range if you're turning it away like this that's not good don't do that or if you're pointing it at the ground so we're pointing it up you want to be pointing this part of the radio here this flat surface here at the, the quad and that's going to give you the best range and you know i did you know some sort of 
basically rudimentary range. I didn't really do any like serious range testing. I had to go like miles and miles away. That 100 milliwatts, um, uh, 150 hertz refresh rate. You know, I get decent range. I'm, you can go by a kilometer away, which is more than acceptable for something of this class in the $40 range. If you're, again, if you're looking for, you know, gobs of range, kilometers away, super long range, I don't even know why you're considering a radio at $40. Uh, when you're sending away a thousand dollar quad, it doesn't seem to make any any sense at all. Now, if you're in if you're into serious long range, you're going to be getting better equipment than this. Uh, this is going to be plenty of range and way more range than you can possibly get with a D8 or D16 receiver. So, um, even with this, you know, sort of you know minimalistic setup with just a little patch antenna here for the um, transmitter antenna. So, uh, given that, you know, you're gonna you should be totally fine. At 100 milliwatts, if you you know if you don't even need that much power, if you're flying indoors, 10 milliwatts, 25 milliwatts are going to be plenty with Express LRS. If you're in an indoor environment flying with whoops and stuff like that. Now, for those of you guys that are considering doing the upgrade, if you have a Light Radio 2SC with the uh, USB-C port, um, the it's really easy to do. You just take the screw, the, basically just uh, eight screws here, six here, and then two inside here. Open it up. I think the board is I think it's held on with four screws and then you just unplug all the basically the gimbal connections and then you want to make sure you label them and, or take a picture and see which ones are which so that when you swap in the other board it should just be a quick swap in um, you should be good to go and it'll just be on the a new Express LRS of course you'll not have FreeSky anymore now they do claim that you can also upgrade the first gen light radio uh, to not the SE version with OpenTX and get rid of that board uh, but that's you know, a different power setup, so you'll have to get your own another battery because that's you know basically that's running off a 2S battery, and then you'll you'll need a 1S battery for that. I'm pretty sure. Also, I, I do know that on the first few batches of that first gen, uh, the gimbal wires were soldered onto the main board and it didn't have plugs, so I'm not sure how that's going to work. I'm not sure if they're going to have a different kit for that or not. You might want to contact them and see what their procedures are for that because I couldn't find that on their website. So I would if, if you have the first gen radio. I would actually contact their tech support and ask them if they give you specific instructions on what to do about that upgrade because the board is also going to be different. It's going to have a USB-C port and you and then uh, the uh, the old first gen's got a little cutout here for a micro USB port, which is a little bit different shape. So you might have to do some modification to the shell here, etc. So I'm not sure how viable the first gen upgrade is going to be you know if you're interested in, in a video about that let me know um uh if there's enough interest i might make a video on how to upgrade the first gen radio the second gen radio should be super easy to do just a swap of the board all the other things should match up and they have the same 1s battery inside so uh that shouldn't really shouldn't be a problem in terms of swapping that out but, but yeah, if you just want to upgrade the main board and not the rest of it, and you have the second gen, it's going to be super easy. It's 20 bucks, which is amazing. Um, and you can go from uh, OpenT, I'm sorry, not OpenTX, but go from the FreeSky D816 to uh, Express LRS. So that's going to be great. Anyway, I think uh, that I'll cover for this one. This video is way too long. Oh, I jabbered on way, way more than I should have on this radio. You know, it's, um, at the end of the day, it's a budget radio. It's... You know, if you're expecting a lot out of this radio, I, I think you'll be disappointed. But if you have your expectations in check and realize it is a budget radio at a very low cost, doesn't have a lot of features, but it does do what it needs to do well, in my opinion, then I think you will be pretty happy with this one. Okay, that's going to do it for this video. Talk to you guys in the next one.